I thought it was time to get one of these LED replacements for fluorescent fittings. Now you can get, either get the tube in its own or fully integrated into a fitting. And they've got this sort of uh, the standard little sort of, it comes a very short tail in fact, that plugs in to the end and it's pins at this end but recessed. And it's also, if you turn it round, it's pins at the other end and recessed. And the reason for that, it might seem a bit dodgy having, you know, basically a live plug, but it is recessed from touch. It comes the little clip-in safety cap and if you want to extend these end to end, you just use this little, little adapter that just pushes in, kind of pushes in maybe, uh, and then you can just plug these end to end. So that's why they've done that. It's reasonable enough. And uh, this came from a supplier that it was based in a UK warehouse, but it was actually from China because if you look at the rest of the stuff they list, Soman Dash 2011. Everything else is on their website. They've got quite a lot of stuff in the UK and uh, other other depots around the world, but it, it seems like everything is fundamentally from China. And it was £7, including the shipping, which is quite uh, low, but given the cost of shipping in the UK is quite high. Um, so here it is, and the first thing I've noticed about this is that the copper wire looks odd. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. It, where it's been stripped, you can see little traces of silver, and if you look at the end, it also looks silver, and I think this is copper-coated aluminium. And there is a test you can do to this, and I've not done that test before, so this is a good time to do that test, because I think this is my first experience of this. So here is a, a piece of copper wire, real copper wire, tinned copper wire, and uh, if I actually... I'm going to try and uh, catch this. If I heat this up with a lighter, it tarnishes, it glows, but it doesn't do much else other than the insulation going a bit odd. Uh, if I do the same with aluminium and if this as aluminium, then it should sort of melt and they're just flopping down. You know, that is uh, that's just completely melted. That is aluminium. That's interesting. I wonder if it's just a copper coloured coating or if it is actually copper plating. One of the biggest issues with using aluminium conductors is the fact, I'm going to have to trim those off now and uh, re-strip it, that's even shorter now. One of the problems with aluminium is that uh, although it's a very good conductor, although it's got a, a low insulation, uh, low insulation, a, a high conductivity, a low resistance, it's uh, prone to surface Oxidation, that's one of the reasons why aluminium is such a successful alloy. It's, if aluminium didn't oxidise on the surface so actively, it would just basically corrode right there and then because it's quite an active alloy. So the fact it protects itself the oxidation is normally a good in a structural application, but in the case of electrical applications, if you try to make a connection onto the aluminium directly, uh, then it will potentially form that oxide layer that is a fairly high resistance and connections are prone to burning up. So you have to use special uh, termination kits on aluminium conductors. In this case, I'm wondering if the copper coating is actually going to have a good effect on that. And having said that, it's not a high current, but uh, it's, yeah, I don't know, I'm not so sure about that. So next thing I'm going to check, having ascertained that is... Uh, actually aluminium. I'm going to plug this in and just check the middle wire, which is tagged with yellow, is actually earth and that it's connected to the casing. So let's get the meter out. And we'll put it to continuity buzzer. And I shall touch it onto the middle wire and touch it to the case. So that is earth to the case, that's good, that is the earth. I'm just going to touch it to the pin at the other end as well. Yep, it does have continuity right through, that's good. So let's uh, make this light up and see how it looks. This is supposed to be a 9 watt one, so this is a good time to actually uh, get the, my fairly accurate energy meter out and plug this into it and we'll see what sort of wattage it displays. So I'm just going to uh, pop these connections in here into this safe test block which used to be very common. You can still get them but they're less common now and they cost about five times that they used to cost. And let's turn it on. OK. 
Okay, that's quite a bright and very warm white. The 9 watt fixture is drawing 10.2 watts. So that's pretty, that's pretty close. That's close enough for me. That is quite bright actually, it's quite impressive. It's a nice warm colour as well. So um, let's uh, open it, shall we, and see what's inside. So I'll just pull those wires out, put that down. So it's got two screws in each end, presumably going into the um, Screwdriver's too short again. That's twice it's happened recently. Is this going to be... There we go. Okay, first thing that's immediately apparent... Oh, it's a strip of LEDs uh, in, in the aluminium extrusion here. First thing that's really apparent is the fact that the earth wire is a brass tang, or what looks like brass, just going onto the surface of the aluminium. It will really work, but I'm not convinced that's a, a, an ideal situation. Oop, there's a big bunch of wires coming out. Okay, let's take the other end off. In fact, let's, uh, oh no, I'll take the other end off first. I'm not sure of this plastic diffuser. I guess, think the plastic diffuser is just stuck into a channel in the aluminium extrusion. Same again with the little brass tang. Oh, okay, so the strip's coming out. Here's the driver, let's see if we can get this. Okay. Right, so it's a strip of, uh, a rigid strip, one continuous strip of uh, LED slid in quite neatly into a channel in there. Very close tolerance. The Conductive strips actually come, I think they come fairly close to the edge. Hmm, interesting. Uh, the only way I'm going to get this out any further is to cut the wires at the other end, so I shall do that right now. I like this aluminium extrusion, it's quite neat. How do they do it so cheap? I guess it's just the sheer bulk of them they use. Yeah, that's that's quite a neat extrusion. I like that. That'd be nice just with ordinary LED tape in it. So, what sort of power supply is this going to be? Is it going to be a capacitive dropper or is it going to be an electronic supply? I would guess it's going to be an electronic supply. And also, what voltage is it driving the LEDs at? You know, we could test that right now. It's kind of heat shrink, uh, not heat shrink, it's uh, that's a braided fiberglassy type sleeving. Let's uh, power this up in a slightly despicable way and test that. I wonder what voltage this is going to be. I wonder if it's all low voltage. I can see them looping together, but I don't know if the pattern... It's almost like the pattern repeats every two LEDs. Uh, I'm going to power this up. And measure the voltage in that. So I'll get that adapter back up and uh, plug it in. As ever, I'll treat everything on the bench as live when I do this, because you just never really know what that power supply is, particularly if it's a capacitive one. So I shall just plug this in and get the meter and test that. Oh, that is bright. The aluminium body will probably act as a heat sink, so I can't leave this on too long. So I shall set this to volts DC, and we'll just tack, try not short this out. Seventy-seven volts. That's higher than I was expecting. Seventy-seven volts. So, if it's roughly 3 volt on LED, that's roughly about 25 LEDs in series. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Then there's a dot, a kind of a mid mark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
in 1920, 21, 20. Yeah, there's 48 LEDs, so it must be two circuits of 24 LEDs. Uh, I wonder how they're wired. I wonder if it's a, a bus bar going down. You know, like uh, these. Uh, the strange thing is, it doesn't look like a continuous. It doesn't look like they're looped, uh, you know, just in a continuous line. I can see the bus bars running down, very thin bus bars, tracks. Oh, this is very odd. I'm just going to get the meter again and uh, meter this out and see how these are wired, because it, it doesn't look like they're just in uh, straight sections. So uh, let's see if these LEDs are connected and they're not. Okay, so how's this going? They're not connected directly in a series. They seem to be alternating. It seems to be like this circuit is going like in like all the odd numbers and the other one's doing all the even numbers. Guessing they're maybe doing that so that if one section fails, it doesn't look like one whole end of the tube goes dark. Uh, it it would mean that the tube would go dimmer, but um, it would still remain lit. I wonder if that's why they've done that. But anyway, let's get into the juicy bit, the power supply here. I thought that was just wrapped round, but it is a plastic sleeve. Very hard to tell what's in there. Uh, it's glued in. Oh, it was glued in. I've just used unreasonable force and now it is no longer glued in. Where's a flat blade just to finish the job off? Oh. Right here. It's a switch mode. So, let's take a wee look at this. Is it a buck regulator? The incoming supply, there's the rectifier, it's converted into DC. Doesn't have much filtering on the input. Making me think this might be a buck regulator. The chip is quite a small number. WS three four one three DBP Yeah Yeah there aren't enough windings in that transformer to really hint at it being Anything more than a buck regulator, it's, the, it's just being used to limit the current and pulses from a DC supply on this side. I don't see the rectification on that side, the transformer. So yeah, it's not really much to, more to say about this. It's basically just a, a fairly typical switching supply, what looks like a buck regulator, and then the two circuits of LEDs with that strange pattern. You can actually see the pattern in the back of it how they're wired. So they are, it's a, it's a jumping uh, series array. But it's visually it's quite nice, it is an attractive looking light. I, I would like to see this with a coloured tape, even if it just meant converting it to low voltage. In fact, you know what, I might just do that right now. So in goes some blue LED tape, just 12 volt stuff, and I have to say, even without the um, Without the diffuser, that's quite a sharp effect. You know, it really looks quite nice in the aluminium because you get a sort of reflection on either side and it makes it very flat and straight. But how will it look if I slide in the diffuser? So how does this diffuser go on? Does it just clip over or does it, I think it could clip, but I think I'll slide it. It's quite tricky to get into the groove. Oh, there it goes. Get into the groove. And that diffuses it nicely. 
you can see a slight patterning. But uh, yeah, let's. Uh... Oh, that's quite nice actually. It's not super bright because that is low power tape. Bear in mind that's about 200 milliamps, that section of tape's running at it 12 volts, which is quite low. But it looks uh, in a sort of like a entertainment environment or a club, that would look very nice just as a sort of visual effect. Yeah, this, this looks like it's uh, got hacking possibilities for modification and changing things. RGB would be quite nice in that as well. It's actually worth the money just for the extrusion and the diffuser. That's quite neat. I do like that. I've been playing about with intensity with just a bit of uh, ordinary low voltage LED tape in. And that's currently running. It's uh, The power supply is about 8.4 volts and the current through this is just under 10 milliamps and yet it looks brighter on the camera than it looks to you but it still looks very bright. Uh, that's quite a good visual effect. That could be run at very low current for still to get a good linear line of light. Uh, this, this is quite neat. I'm quite liking this a lot.